In a world where innovators and inventors are growing drastically, there is a stronger need for creators to have legal ownership and thus protection of their intellectual property. In this episode, we dive into Rwanda's creative entrepreneurial ecosystem in line with the country's intellectual property rights. My name is Murundi Sara and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. In Rwanda, despite the efforts made towards achieving gender parity across sectors, there still remains a large gap when it comes to women who own intellectual property over their inventions. This year we are celebrating the day, uh, reflecting on uh, how women can leverage on intellectual property to create more, to innovate more. Um, from the available statistics, uh, it is a fact that women are underrepresented in terms of intellectual property rights, different categories. So, uh, but again, they are playing uh, a big role uh, from different aspects of our daily life, um, whether social or economic. And this year, we want to show that women can also. Um, use intellectual property to foster economic development. Already um, the gaps and challenges uh, our country is still experiencing despite uh, tremendous achievements we have achieved in the area of promoting gender equality and uh, fighting all barriers related to women's rights, enjoyment, and gender equality promotion at large. So um, we, already are, we are already aware that um, in some corners, male-dominated uh, fields, we still have a limited number of women and girls. We are already aware that we have especially the structural barriers to entry, to enrollment into um, different fields. Generally, across all sectors in Rwanda, there seems to be staggering numbers when it comes to intellectual property rights ownership. What are the hindrances and structural barriers to entry? If you look at the statistics at the Rwanda Development Board, you will find that in total, all the intellectual property uh, assets that are registered by women represent uh, only 15% of uh, all the intellectual property rights that are registered. And this is not uh, different from what is uh, existing worldwide because as you might have heard also from the World uh, Intellectual Property Organization, uh, women uh, owned intellectual property assets it represent slightly above uh, 16%. Uh, for new entrepreneurs, it's a lack of information because RDB they register for free, but there's the other ones you, you have to pay. Like for the specific designs that you want to protect with law, you have to pay. Economic would be related to women's access to finance, but that access we know that it's not natural. It is, it is again related to the social barriers I was referring to. So and what institutions are, are recommended to do and have to do according to our gender policy, but also according to, to our vision of the country that recommends gender mainstreaming in all that we do and how we do it. Institutions when they mainstream gender, they know already that in the packages, for instance, the banks, the microfinance institutions, they would know, they would know that we still need those specific packages, let me say gender transformative packages. Designing and producing various kinds of innovations without securing intellectual property rights over them has its own disadvantages. I had uh, this project we did for 3D. It was in lockdown and we worked on this product. This project of, 
It's a digital project for Nyambo. So we had a girl, we named her Nyambo Azura, and she was like an animated model. And every, you can tell and you can see that she's like a real model. So it, it was a trend. I got like published in Elle magazine and some other magazines. So, and everyone was sharing it and like a star was born. So I was so proud, but for that, I just found out that there's some other designers who took it advantage for my design and just got the idea and copied. Yeah. Of course, the and you go Ukatiruja so kuba ko nta yandikishije cyo giye nta ntabwo mba mfite ingingo indengera cyane from the legal perspective from the police perspective our legal uh, instruments our police uh, documents they are uh, inclusive but again uh, it's um, I would say uh, something that has been there for quite some time. Uh, gender stereotypes uh, that um, told us from time immemorial that women cannot go into certain areas, mainly science, technology, mathematics areas, and these are uh, the areas that are contributing to uh, innovation. Uh, so from the legal and the police uh, instruments that are inclusive, then there is need for action to show that women can also do it. And it starts with awareness, um, like the one that we are having today as we celebrate the World Intellectual Property uh, Day, where we showcase that a number of women have come up with innovations, have come up with the creative um, uh, works, and then uh, sending a message to, uh, let's say, um, young generation that women can also uh, contribute, that women can innovate, can um, uh, own intellectual property assets. And then the more we raise awareness, the more we show um, different uh, initiatives that are there, uh, the more we are likely to see women uh, increasing um, uh, in terms of um, the number of women uh, owning intellectual property assets, registering intellectual property assets, and hence contributing to their um, uh, um, uh, economic development and uh, uh, entrepreneurial uh, activity. Now that we have a grasp of what the gaps and challenges, as well as the cons of not registering for intellectual property rights, what is the way forward in order to increase IP rights ownership? Intellectual property um, asset or rights, uh, rights like others, uh, rights like uh, uh, tangible rights that you can use to get funding, use them as collaterals. So uh, we are using different um, uh, media uh, to ensure that we raise this awareness about the importance of um, these assets. As a designer, I just got like uh, 20 sketches a day or like 30 sketches because like I can design more. The more I design, the more I get like more inspiration. So I just, if, even if I finish any sketch before starting the sewing and other procedures, I just go to RDB just to protect my design. Ikintu mbona gishobora kuzahinduka nuko abantu bazumva agaciro k'igihangano cy'umuntu niba ari umuntu giye kuyikoresha muri content runaka akayigusaba kuko ari wowe nyiri gihangano akamenya ko agomba kugisaba nyiracyo ukamuburenganzira bwacyo ikindi nabahanzi nabo ubwo bazamenya agaciro k'ibihangano byawe 
ikindi i think ko bizagira mo umuntu azinjiza azabona more profit kubiva mu bihangano byi for many registering for intellectual property rights seems like a daunting task and one that may be reserved for big businesses what does the process of ip rights registration actually look like generally uh, as i said we have two categories we have um, copyright which uh, covers artistic works literary works and um, this is protected from the time of creation as i have said you do, you are not required to register your um, uh, copyrighted material uh, to benefit from the protection of the law but we do encourage um, the owners of such rights to register them uh, because it uh, helps it to reduce um, disputes about ownership and for that one it is free of charge you don't pay anything for copyright protection and um, you get your registration certificate within seven days that is uh, one week and for the other category of industrial property that covers patents, uh, those um, uh, 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 certificates that are issued to inventors, um, the second category, subcategory being uh, industrial uh, designs that protect um, shapes and the ornamental aspects of uh, products. Um, the third subcategory being um, trademarks, trade names that um, uh, help to distinguish products of one enterprise from those of the other. Uh, basically, uh, those are the main ones. And for each of those subcategories, you have requirements that um, should be met. And then you have to pay a fee. We have different fees that are accessible on the website of um, RDB uh, and different uh, paperwork that you have to, 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 to complete, forms that you complete, but also uh, 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 samples that you produce. Uh, like in the case of a trademark, you have to show uh, how it looks like. For a patent, you have to describe it. Uh, but the detailed uh, requirements are um, available on the website of uh, RDB. And maybe what I can say is that the process is not uh, complicated. It is um, uh, indeed easy, but the issue is about uh, awareness. And as the uh, intellectual property office, uh, that is RDB, we do provide also support when someone does not maybe uh, know how to navigate through the, that kind of paperwork that is um, uh, required. That's it for this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Thank you for watching and let's keep the conversation going. To engage with us further, you can tag us on our Twitter handle at CNBC Africa or tag me directly at the Murundi Sarah.